Welcome everybody to Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the New Testament, Psalm and Proverbs in 60 days. And 40, we'll be reading 1 Corinthians 4 through 9, actually 4 through 10, and Psalm 10506. So let's get started here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. <coughs> Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And, the, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory, as if thou hadst not received it? Now if you are full, now if you are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons to warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and I will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? 1 Corinthians 5 It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you, for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or with extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company, if any man that calleth a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one know not to eat. What have I to do to judge them also that are without? 
do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. 1 Corinthians 6 Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world, and if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. <clears throat> a brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God in Ye are not your own, for ye are brought, bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 7 Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man to not touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one to one the other, except to be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. And come together again, that Satan tempt you not from your incontinency. But I speak, I speak this by permission and not of commandment, for I would that all men were even as myself, but every man hath this proper gift of God. One after this manner, and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them to, if they abide, even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not to the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. What knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called to be 
in uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called, being free, is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called there abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment to the Lord, yet I give my judgment, as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress, I say that it is good for a man to so be. Art thou bound to, unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned, and if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned, nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is a married care, careth for the things that belong to the Lord, now how he may please the Lord, but he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, but she may be holy both in body and spirit, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely towards his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and need so required, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, that hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart, that he will keep his virgin, doeth well. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 8 Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, little g, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods, little g, many, and lords many, but unto us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all are things, and we by him. Habeit there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But take heedless by any means, this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which hast knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died? But when ye sin so against the brethren, and wound their conscience, ye sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. 1 Corinthians 9 Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye and the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this, Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have not we power to forbear working, who goeth a warfare at any time of his own charges? 
who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof, or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as of a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of an ox that shreddeth out the corn. Doth God take care for the oxen? Or saith he altogether for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be a partaker of hope. We have sown unto your spiritual things, it is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. If others be partakers of this power for you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained, that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die, than that any man should make my glory in void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. For I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. The weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so I fight, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. 1 Corinthians 10 Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud as passed through the sea. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did eat the same spiritual meat, and did, did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted, neither be ye idolaters as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed in the dis of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to the wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, it is not the communion of blood of Christ. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God. I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. 
cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man his another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, ask, asking no questions for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and ye be not disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if a man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say not thine own, but of another. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all for the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Moving on to Psalm 105. O give thanks unto Yahweh. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek Yahweh. Seek Yahweh in his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham his servant, ye children of Jacob his chosen. He is Yahweh, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land, and he brake the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters and was laid in iron, until the time that his word came, the word of Yahweh tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, and he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with their servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish, and their land brought forth frogs in abundance in chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came diverse sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees, and brake their trees in their coasts. He spake, and the locusts came, and caterpillars, and that without number, and did up all the herbs of the land, and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in the land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering, and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out, and they ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness. And he gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye Yahweh. Psalm 106 Praise ye Yahweh, O give thanks unto Yahweh, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of Yahweh? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Yahweh, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, 
that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers, we have committed iniquity, we have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up, so he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then believed they his words, they sang his praise, they soon forgot his works, they waited not for his counsel. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness, and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of, of Yahweh. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan, and covered the company of Eberam. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb, and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forget God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach, to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Yea, they despised the pleasant land, they believed not his word, but murmured in their tents, and hearkened not unto the voice of Yahweh. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them, to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations, and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Bel Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague brake in upon them. Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed, and they that counted on him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom Yahweh commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works, and they served their idols which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. And thus were they defiled with their own works, and went to whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of Yahweh kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen. They that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with the counsel, and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered for them his covenant, and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carry them captives. Save us, O Yahweh our God, and gather us from among the heathen, to give thanks unto thy holy name, and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be Yahweh, God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye Yahweh. Alright. That's going to be it. I really like this verse here in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all for the glory of God. Just like putting God first in everything you do. Uh, putting God first and doing everything for God. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta, ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him. Have trust in Him and wait upon Him. And you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. God willingly. Thanks again. Take care.